Hi guys, Sai here, and welcome to something huge. This is an interactive Go board that lets you play Go, Ego Tianchi, or one of its several other names. It uses Japanese scoring rules for territory, because it's easiest, and yeah, all around, I think it's pretty cool. So, this is going to be the first of two videos. This is the showcase video. If you want to see a technical in-depth of how each of the functions work, or the vast majority of them, head over to the second video, which will be linked at the top corner of the screen at the moment, and in the doobly-doo. And that'll explain everything to your desire. But this one, we're going to show you the controls and what happens. So, first, and possibly most important controls, are our cursors. So, if we see, we have two arrows for each player. The ones on the dark wood are for the black player, and the ones on the light wood are for the white player. Moldy97 has very handily labelled the cursors because they were slightly confusing. The directions of the cursor movement is as you are looking at the cursor here. So the up and down move it up and down this axis, and the left and right move it up and down the alf alphabetical axis. So, uh, we've selected a space in the centre there, just one off in each direction from the absolute centre. And let's place a stone. We only get one opportunity to place a stone per turn, the game makes sure of that. And here we can see we've placed a stone. Also, this light has turned on. The space is occupied. So, we can't place any more stones there, it won't let us try to place any more stones there. If you want to be a bit of a jerk and move the cursor around and then quickly click place stone on a space where there is already a stone and you know there's already a stone there, you're going to be a bit disappointed. The safeguards inside the actual logic to stop you from doing that, so all you're going to do is waste your move. It won't let you try and place a stone again, so just don't bother. Uh, now, the board doesn't automatically detect whether your stones are dead. Uh, this is to save time. It would take about 40 seconds per move if it did, and that's pretty unacceptable. So it asks you to select dead groups, and you know, we, we don't, nothing's dead, so we shall end our turn. Now, if we end our turn before we place a stone, it passes to the other player, and if both players pass, the game ends, as happens with an actual game of Go. Now the turn has not shifted over. Right, as you can see, now it is the white turn, if we just get rid of that. So, white has this space occupied, and that's fine. So if we place this down here... Here a lot of pistons go off, and this light turns on, and we shall pass. Now, at this point, I'm just going to demonstrate a couple of other functions. If, at any time, we want to reset the board, we can request a board reset. This resets everything. However, it's got a little bit of a safeguard in it, so that that doesn't immediately start lagging everyone's game. If we look over there, we can see the light at the top is on. And if we can see up here, it says black requests for a board reset. And if we did the lever at the other side, this light would turn on. So if both of these levers turn down at the same time, the board resets. The same for territory counting. Um, I should really lock this into the end game phase, but I haven't. So don't use that unless you need to. Anyway, we've placed a stone and we've ended our turn. So if we now head back over to black. Uh, this thing might still have a few bugs. I just fixed one that meant that whenever you placed a black stone, white stones in row G were removed, and that was caused by one block of wool not being placed. So yeah, if you find a bug, 
please tell me and if you tell me I can fix it and get the world download up again it's just nightmarish to debug as you saw at the start in that panoramic there's so much um, this should have been done on a multiplayer server actually this uh, showcase just to say with Mulvey97 he was going to help me out but Cube Hamster's server isn't up at the moment nor is his team speak or his website so I've not got a clue what's going on this is built in my plot on his server and that's what the world download is just my plot uh, so yeah if I play a little bit of the game out here we'll just uh, try and accelerate it a bit as you can see over here a fight has broken out and we're, well actually I should have come here when it was uh, White's turn. Whoops, but we can handle it being Black's turn. If we look, we're now selecting this space. So let's. Black didn't handle this fight very well, as you can see. Uh, this stone is in. Not Co, is it? Or is it Co? I can't remember the term for the near death situation. Anyway, if we end turn, not our turn anymore, and come over here, you can see that's working properly because it's now White's turn, and we can take a stone. So. There we go, we have the cursor in the right position on this cell here. And if we place a stone here, we hear all that going off. Um, see our stones placed and as I said, we don't have automatic death deletion, uh, death detection sort of thing. So that's not going to kill itself. However, if we mouse over that black group now, we can say kill group. And nothing's happened. Is this another bug? Question. It's our turn. Pink isn't being blocked. Pink's being blocked by this. Why is that on? That shouldn't be... Uh, okay. Yep, it's just stuff like this that ruins your day. There we go. That's why so many pistons were going off that shouldn't have been. Now we can do it. There we go, that group's dead, and if we look up here, white has scored one point in this row because a black stone has died. If a white group had been killed, uh, the point would have gone to black instead, which is pretty cool, that automatic scoring, I'd say. So, uh, let's let this play out a little longer and then come back again. There we go, white stone dead, and black scored a point. These counters are in base six, unfortunately. The top rows count multiples of six, essentially that means, and the bottom rows count multiples of one. This is a huge flaw and I'm just sorry for it. Sorry, not much more I can say. <laughs> okay, we have now come to another important feature. As you can see here, Black's a pretty terrible player. White's got control of a fair portion of the board at the moment. Uh, Black's got some influence over there, but I don't claim to be a good Go player, so that's not what this is about. However, over here you see we have a Black group here, and it only has one live space. And it's currently White's turn, so we're going to place a stone there. Uh, the controls here, if you've noticed, are reversed from black and white and they're switched across. This is just for bussing ease. Uh, 
So now you see this group is dead. So if we go roughly to the center of the group, just to help the computer out a little bit. It can handle this if you don't do the center, but you have to... It's sometimes if groups are too big, like you go from one end of a 20 long group or something and it has signals have to travel all the way around, the scoreboards won't update properly immediately. They will eventually, but not right away. So, now we are going to kill this group. If we press kill group, we see that the entire group dies at once and we get scored for all of them. This is, like, the most important feature in the game. Um, or, the, the, this is the thing that prompted me to design this go board. I just thought of the mechanism for doing this and thought that would be awesome. Okay guys, so we can see that the game is pretty much over now. White had a bit of a fight up in the top corner here and lost. That group can't survive, it's dead. And other than that, everything's fairly safe. Black has that corner, white has this corner. Not too many stones have been taken on either side, and everything's closed up, so we're ready to end the game now. So, to end the game, it's currently White's turn, and White hasn't placed a stone this turn, so if White just presses end turn... Okay, there we go, now we can see that um, Black shows that White has passed. Uh, the problem was I needed an extra repeater because the power source for the lock was in a slightly different position to... I mean, it was further away than the actual button itself. So now if black passes... Hopefully... Uh, there we go. Both pass lights are now showing. So, it should be the end game. If we see, it's not black's turn nor is it white's turn now okay it still isn't anyone's turn but if we move the black controller over to roughly the middle of this white group here so we're not getting any sound at the moment uh, sound should not be off there we go Oops. There we go, that's pretty much central. It's three from those ends and four from this end. And you'll notice we can kill this group. Even though it's not marked as our turn. Uh, there we go. Oh, we've not had transmission over here. Which is slightly odd, I'll just go and check that. Okay, that I did not quite expect. That actually turned out to be a flaw in the system for... Well, basically, white group removal wasn't propagating in the positive alphabetical direction. Uh, which is awfully specific, but it was actually a flaw in the... Um, architecture which I didn't expect however I've gone and fixed that so we can get rid of these last ones uh, didn't notice before but that one didn't die either which shows what was happening so if we ah, I went a bit too far but we can delete it there anyway There's our points added, and just this one as well. There we go. And if we... And the scores. So, now for the territory count. Now, I've never actually... Um, 
counted the territory before. Okay, so I've fixed the territory counting matrix and all of the extra stuff. And it took me almost a day because there were so many little bugs. But it's working now. However, it doesn't work in every case. And this is due to time constraints. For instance, this board setup will count the black territory wrong. It just won't work. And the reason for this is if you look at this end, we have white stones down here, and these white stones are contesting this entire long region all the way around the edge. And the propagation for that takes forever. This doesn't particularly matter though, because this never occurs at the end of a real game of Go. Black would try and capture all that territory in the top corner, and white would try to stop them. And if you really, really need to uh, do this, you can always place stones like so. Okay, now as we can see, we've not changed the score at all, but we have got lot rid of that big, long, stringy, contested territory. Now every area, every space in the contested territory is no more than three blocks, three uh, moves, I suppose. No three spaces away from each uh, colour. So if we see in the top corner here, I've just placed a white stone in the contested territory and a black stone over here, and I've just split it up into two. And this hasn't changed the state of the game at all, but it makes it a lot easier on the board to compute. So now, as we can see, black's requested territory count, and if white accepts, and we wait a little bit, Okay, we can see white scores, which are right, if we see four on the bottom row, two, 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 three. So white scoring is right, and blacks is right all apart from this stone. I think this might just be a little bug with this specific space. I'll go and sort that out. But anyway, thank you for watching, have a nice day, see you soon, and I hope you enjoy and uh, download and uh, play with your mates.